Praise the Lord. It is good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. I believe that the Lord was really in this word that He gave me this morning. I this whole service has kind of gravitated in that direction. It's kind of amazing how that happens. You know, many times we question God as to why things aren't going always our way. And kind of like last Sunday, I had quite a few scriptures, but you might have to hang on to your hat this morning. Uh, we're going to start in Second Corinthians, the ninth chapter, verses 6 through 8. And if y'all could just stand with us for the reading of God's Word. Uh, young, young church, I, I'm not a bit shy if you say amen, okay? So, uh, don't hold nothing back. If you shout on me, maybe you just shout it a little quieter. Okay? <laughs> Because uh, you might have a neighbor nearby that knows that that word just spoke to you, okay? But I believe that every word of God is inspired by the Holy Ghost. I do not believe that any word was recorded out of happenstance. I believe that the word of God is the authority of God. It just amazes me how it is so easy for some to accept part of the Scripture but deny other parts of the Word of God. And as we look to the Word, we see that this Word begins in these terms. But this I say, He which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he pursueth in his heart, so let him give not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound toward them, uh, toward you, that ye always have it all sufficiency in all things may abound in every good work. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, let us just settle within our hearts this morning that your word is yea and amen. Father, that by the authority of the word of God we dwell and we live, and we have our being. Father, your work does not get done unless those that are believers sow into the kingdom of God. Father, the sowing is not just about money. It's about works. It's about being doers of God's will. It's about having a hunger to be pleasing to God. But Father, let us understand this morning, one cannot do it all. We all must work together for the common good of the kingdom of God. And Father, my prayer is this morning that this word will stir our spirits, that we have an understanding of our calling, Father, that we know within our hearts, Father God, that you are sending us forth into a world that is wretched. 
that is lost. Father, that the Word of God may become the center of this nation once again. Father, preaching to those that don't believe that they might receive the eternal hope of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Y'all help me this morning as we try to preach for just a little while. But as Paul was talking to the church of Corinth, he, he put out a, a word to them that they may see the necessity of sowing and reaping. You know, when I was a little kid, my dad always had us. We, we, we raised huge gardens, as most of you know. And we would always, when we dropped the kernels of corn in the ground, we always drop three kernels at a time. Now, I know the farmers today, they drop a single kernel, but they do so close together, you know, anymore, my goodness, it's just amazing how close they plant their crops to get the reward. But my dad's thoughts was, if three come up, two will be strong and one may die. That was his thoughts as we planted the corn. And you know what? He was pretty much right. Because the two strongest took over all the nutrients in the ground and the weakest one usually kind of ended up being a runt so we just chopped it off with a hole. And as we went through the garden we would, we would always plant wide enough that we could put a handful of fertilizer between every three kernels of corn. A handful triple 12. I don't know if anybody else is playing the garden. My dad was a 12, 12, 12 guy. Okay? I know that's not too spiritual this morning, but I hope you can turn it into something spiritual. Uh, because I want to say to the church, without the power of the Holy Ghost, it's like planting corn in soil that has no fertilization. Okay? And when we sow the Word, and we begin to do the Word, as God has called us to do, we can't do it sparingly. I look at so many people and they think a little is good enough in the kingdom of God. As long as I just go to church on Sunday, that's good enough. No church? That, that's just the start. Okay? That's just the start of doing what God has called us to do. And Amen. I think about as we sow, we ought to sow with a whole heart. Now when I'm talking about sowing this morning, I'm not talking about planting corn. I'm not talking about planting beans. I'm talking about planting a seed of righteousness. Amen. So that others can come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. One of the most powerful tools that God has given us is our mouth. Amen? Yeah. We can either use it to plant good or we can use it to sow evil. The Bible said a man that can control his tongue is the same as a perfect man. Well, that's pretty powerful, isn't it? <laughs> that, that, that this is a, an unruly evil that many of us have in our mouth. We, we use it to sow uh, un unrighteousness. We use it to sow hatred and bitterness. We use it to broadcast falseness. We use it many times to just to, to, you know, just even complain and grumble about the things in our life. The church, if we would start using the members of our body as God has given them for us to use, instead of grumbling and complaining, let's give Him praise. Amen. Amen. You may not be feeling the best this morning, but praise God, you was able to get out of bed. <laughs> Amen. You may not feel like being here this morning, but praise God, you came and the Spirit of God fell. Amen. Amen. We may not have the attitude of worship, but praise God, somebody else will they begin to worship and sow that seed of righteousness in our spirit. Our spirit gets in tune with that spirit that is within another. And before long, we begin to feel the power of God move and motivate us into righteousness. 
Church, the important part is it's not that all of us have the same emotion when we come into the house of God, but when one has a gift and they use that gift that the kingdom of God has given them, let us not so sparingly. Amen. I think about song. I love song it's a tune. This morning I hit a few wrong keys. I, I had one song I didn't really know it that well. And, and you know, I was a little off on it, but boy, you know, every time I've done it, you probably see the grimness on my face. Because I feel uncomfortable. I, I can't read a lick of music. I just play my ear, but you know, something sometimes we get ahead of ourselves, and that's what I was doing. I was getting ahead of myself. I thought I know where we were going, and I didn't know. The top changed one direction, I thought it was going another direction. My apologies, amen. But let me tell you something. When the kingdom of God and the spirit of unity begins to fall in the house of God, we come in one mind, in one accord, in one spirit, amen. And we know that the leading of the Holy Ghost is in the house. It's not because, amen, it's all about me. It's because all together we come in one spirit. Yes. Praise God. Isn't it a glorious thing when the power of God falls? I love it when the Holy Ghost moves. It's just silence. Amen? I love it when the power of God begins. Even a baby will be quiet when the Holy Ghost is moving. Amen? It's an amazing thing. It's an amazing thing that the Spirit of God can even quicken a child. That they have an understanding to reverence. Even before they learn how to talk, they know how to reverence the Spirit of God. Isn't that amazing? It is to me. Praise God, church. I'm talking about a God that says, when we sow sparingly, we shall also reap sparingly. And he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Now we come into the house of God. Now, I, I know nobody else has ever had this happen, but sometimes on the way to church, Satan likes to cause distress in the family. Yeah. Okay? Maybe that's why some of you drive separate. I don't know. But, <laughs> amen. But I need to tell you, I know, I know how that works. He likes to sow distress. Arguments. How many of you have ever been going to church and an argument got started in the car and went to church? Or a disagreement or a disgruntled spirit or maybe just brooding within yourself. You know what's going on? The enemy don't want you to be blessed. God wants you to be blessed bountifully. You say, but Brother Mike, we go through that all week long. Amen. I tell you what, we don't have to. Amen. Praise God. We can put a stop to it. Now, see the problem. Most of y'all know I'm always right. right? Okay. <laughs> I thank you for laughing. Okay. I'm just trying to humor you just a little bit. We always like to be right, don't we? We all have opinions. But when it comes to the house of the Lord, Church, it's not about you being right. It's about God being right. Yes. It's not about your opinion. It's about God's opinion of worship. Yes. It's not about how you feel. It's about how God feels towards you. Yes. Amen. Come on, church. Yes. People say, well, I don't feel the power of God. The reason we don't feel the power of God is because we're not walking in the Spirit of God. Yes. Amen. Even before I got saved, when the power of God moved, I felt it. Come on, church. And God would bring me under such strong conviction. I used to sit, tears just rolled down my face, but yet I was too stubborn in the flesh to make a move for God because I was set in my own ways. Amen. Receiving nothing from God. But yet knowing all that He had to offer. You know there's churches set full of people this morning that don't know what the true Spirit of God is. Amen. They go in for a rhyme and a poem and a go home song. Yeah. Amen. Church, that's not what it's about. It's about having a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. People say, well, good, he ain't going to talk about money this morning. Oh, yes, I am. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> You're not getting out that easy. Because there's many things I think that the kingdom of God needs to speak about. Because if we're going to profit the kingdom of God, we got to profit him with all that we have. Now, I'm not a money preacher, and I very rarely ever preach about money. It's the hardest message I ever preach because I don't feel like it's appropriate in a lot of people. <laughs> that's all they talk about. Yeah. Amen? That's the only message they have. It's how much money are you going to put in the plate this morning? 
Church, I ain't into how much money you're going to put in the plate this morning. What I'm into is how do you want to be blessed this morning? Amen. How much of God do you want to be walking in? How much of the spirit of the anointing do you want to have flowing through your life? How about your health? Do you want your health to be perfect and upright? Church, you say, but Brother Mike, you're for a good one to talk about that. Amen. I tell you what, the devil attacks us on every side. But we still have to press forward. We got to press for that high calling. We got to press for the mark of the kingdom of God. Amen. And the word goes on to say, but it says, every man according to his purpose in his heart. Now, when the word of God says man, women understand. I'm talking about you too. This is talking about mankind. There's even a new Bible print out here that's took the word man out of all of it. They made it unisexual. Amen. I ain't worried about that. <laughs> Because when I preach, I hope to God you women understand. I'm not talking about just the male species. I'm talking about man and woman. Amen? We need to understand that the Word of God says every man, according as he purposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, but God loveth a cheerful giver. Now, I'm not going to start off with money here. <laughs> i tell you what. The more you do for the kingdom of God, the more God will bless you. We need to be excited about what we can do for God's kingdom. Amen. We don't all have the same gifts. I tell you what, when Brother Bob's up here singing, I can bail her out a little bit out of tune and y'all won't hear it because he covers my mistakes, right? <laughs> all right? But yet I ought to sing from the depths of my heart. Amen. We had no preacher years ago when I was a little boy. His name was Brother Turner. And bless his heart, he, he died preaching. And man, that man could preach. But he could not sing a lick. He sounded like a bear chasing after something crazy, okay? I mean, the poor fella, he thought he was singing bass, but I don't know what was coming out, but it wasn't a song. And that's the truth. And everybody knew it, and he did too, okay? But he'd get happy, and he would just be hollering and carrying on. Bless God, he was singing from the depths of his heart. But the word just flowed right on. The music just flowed right on. We had beautiful music in the church. I was raised Pentecostal, most of you know. Uh, we, we had music, man. We had drums, harmonicas, guitars by the dozens. <laughs> they had piano, organ. They played music when the preacher preached. Amen. Talk about motivating the preacher. They'd get behind him and shove him on. <laughs> Amen. Why? Because we knew how to worship the Lord. And when people sung, they didn't whisper. They sang. The harmony was beautiful. The songs were robust and encouraging. There was no songs full of misery and sorrow. I listen to some of the songs the church sings anymore and I'm ready to go to the funeral home. Amen. It sounds like a funeral song. Amen. I ain't living dead. Amen. I'm living life. Praise God. I'm not one without hope. I'm one that has hope. Oh, I go through trials and troubles, but praise God, I know where the mountain lies. Amen. Even though the valley's where the water and the grass is, I still want to climb to the mountaintop to make an altar to fall on my face before God and praise Him and honor Him. I want to get a little closer to God. But you know what the Word of God encourages us to press in. How many of y'all been praying and you didn't feel nothing when you started praying? Amen. Me, 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 me. I'm... I'm going to admit to that. How many of you have persevered? Just kept praying. Yes. You hit a wall. Spiritually, you hit a wall. You say, God, where are you at? God, why don't I feel you? I want to encourage you what to do right there. Stop and begin to meditate upon the Word of God. Amen? Start praising. Amen. I'd like to teach the church how to re pray. Amen. I really would. And I hope there's a thousand people watching this on this video when it comes out. Because many people don't even know how to pray. People pray as if they're telling God in the grocery list. They're calling into Walmart so they'll lead them out of the car. Amen. That ain't how I pray. When I pray, I begin with praise. Amen. Come on, church. God, He loves the praise of His people. The Bible says God inhabits the praise of His people. When you start praising, you may not feel like praising. Just keep on praising. Lift your hands up. Fall on your knees. Lay on your face. 
You mean you would, you would dare to pray like that? I pray in the bed a lot. Amen. Sometimes I'm laying on the floor. Amen. I get on my knees. I'm not ashamed to get on my knees. Praise God. Sometimes we stand up and lift our hands. Me and Lisa pray together. We usually sit down and hold hands together as we pray. Even when we're praying over our food, we begin with thanks. Thanks. We give God glory and honor on every man according to his purpose in his heart. What's your purpose? Well, my purpose is what can I get from God? No! See, that's the wrong attitude. That's why a lot of people say they confess Christ. I just want to get to heaven. That's not enough. That's not enough. That's like marrying a woman just because she's pretty. I've seen some pretty women that was the most angry, vicious, vehement people I've ever met. They were stuck on themselves. That they, ladies out there, don't get mad at me, okay? But let me tell you what, beauty on the run skin deep. All right? I love a beautiful woman that has a heart after God. Praise God, today's our anniversary. And I thank God. 34 years today, amen. 6.30 this evening. Praise God we got married. I thank God that on that day, my life began all over new. I've been married longer than I've been anything else. But, you know, it's been a joy. She asked me this morning, come to church. She said, Mike, would you do it all over again? My land's a thousand times over yes. I don't think there's one of you in here that can say, I don't love my wife because I love her with all my heart, all my soul, and all my mind. But I tell you one, I love more than her. And that's my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And by me loving Him more, makes me love her more. Amen. Men and women, let me tell you something. The more emphasis you put on God's plan, the more plan God has for you. Amen. When you bless one another, when you love one another, God sees that love developing in your spirit, and He'll pour His grace and His bounty out upon you. There is not a day that goes by that we don't tell each other we love each other. See, I was raised that way. I, I kind of had a jump start on those people. and Some of you had that privilege and some of you didn't. I understand that. In my home, my daddy rubbed my head and kissed me on the top of the head every day. Say, said, Michael, I love you. Even when I was getting beat half to death, he would kiss me on the top of his head when I got done. And he'd say, Michael, I love you. That's why I correct you. And I watched tears run down his face, and I didn't understand that. I could not comprehend well, why did you just whip me? Okay, if you love me so much, you're crying that you just whip me. The tears weren't about whipping me. Those tears were love. I understand that now as an adult. People say, man, you shouldn't cry. Oh, Jesus wept. He wept because people, I've heard his message preached a thousand times probably. The Bible said that Jesus wept. The preachers preached it all because his friend died. No, he wasn't weeping because his friend died. He was weeping because the nation of Israel did not trust in the resurrection. That's why he was weeping. Because of unbelief. <laughs> Praise God. We all weep. I had some tears in my eyes this week when I went to my aunt's funeral. I realized that was the last time I was going to see her physical body. But my hope is that one day I'll see her spiritual body. <laughs> Amen? That's the hope that I have within me. And I wish that preacher preach his message might hear this because let me tell you what he done an awesome job preaching. And I couldn't keep my mouth shut while he was preaching. Amen? I've had holler amen a few times. <laughs> I tell you what, I love when the Word of God is preached. I love when God's Word is plain. It's plain spoken. But we need to understand, church, that we have more to offer God than we even imagine. Think about the widow in her might. All that she had was the widow's might. Now that was a small... That's how I put a penny in the offering. There's no shame in putting a penny in the offering. The devil tries to tell you, well, yeah, that you're not even worthy. Just drop a penny on. Let me tell you what, if that's what you got and that's what you're giving, God will bless that just as much as He will the $100 bills. Right. Amen. 
Oh, you got the dollar to give to God? Amen. God honor that dollar just as he much a hundred dollar bill. That's right. Praise God. It's not about the amount. It's about the obedience. Yeah, yeah. Amen. I do believe the tithe and offering. I believe that the church needs to be obedient to that fact because the church cannot survive without it. And we know that. But church, it's a deeper thing than money. There's a deeper walk that we need to understand. The principles of giving is not just the principles of receiving. That's why I get so disrupted about some of these charismatic messages that we hear today. When you give $100, you've got to give you 1000 Don't blame that hogwash. Okay? God didn't promise to give you $1,000. What God did, He said, I'll redeem your health. I'll redeem your family. I'll put, I'll be able, I'll put store, stores in your house that you can't contain them. God said, I'll be your provider even when there's doubt and famine around you. Church, what we need to understand, when we give to God of ourselves, now what are we giving? We're giving our time. Amen. Amen. A man will just tie the time to God. I believe God would be satisfied with you. Amen. Why? Because if you tie the time, you know to tie your money. You tie your money, you tie everything else you have. You give God freely. But you know, let me tell you this. If you give out the duty of giving, don't give. Yeah. Well, I think, let me figure this up to the bidding. I, boy, I hate giving this, boy. Bless God, I could, man, I could buy a new TV. I could, I could, in a couple of weeks, I could have a new gun. Yeah. <laughs> I think like us men now, I could be a new rod and reel. Yeah. Big catfish pole. Amen. I got so many guns now, I don't need another gun. I don't think I ever bought one. I go, yeah, I bought a couple. But every gun I've had has been given to me pretty much. I don't need a new rod and reel because I've got rod and reels. I ain't pretty strong in years. Yeah. Don't need boats. we got boats set that ain't even been in the water for a few years. I mean, you got to be ain't never been in the water. I'm afraid I'll turn it over. <laughs> See, we need to understand God will give to us freely. When you give to God, God will bless you. You say, Brother well, Mike, I don't believe it. I had a brother. Let me tell you a little story. I had a brother of mine who moved away. He said, he called me up and he said, Brother Mike, I want to bless you. I'm like, okay. He said, will you come up to my house? He said, just, just come up here first. I went to this gentleman's house and he said, I got a few things I want to give you. He started with Paul walking me around his house and giving me stuff. I'm like, whoa, I need a truck, I need trailers. That dude gave me more stuff than I go, man, he gave me 35 guns. Yeah, 35 guns. Shop tools, very demeanor I can imagine. I got 50 pound boxes of screws and nuts and dials and I got more light switches than this building has, still new in the box. Wire, screw. I mean, I, boy, I tell you what, I walked down there blessed. Yes. And the basketball nets, probably put a basketball net on every house in this county. What are we talking about? I tell you what, when you bless God, God bless you. It wasn't money He gave me, it was things that He had possessed over the years. He didn't need no more, He didn't want no more. And God began to bless. He opened up the windows of heaven and He blesses. Now, I don't know if people believe this stuff, but let me tell you what. Sometimes you don't know where the next dollar's coming from and boom, it shows up. That's right. Yeah. i tell you what, we've had miracles in our life. I'd go into church one time to preach it. I'd been invited to another church to preach it. Man, my car was sitting on empty. This is a true story. I got as far as Driftwood Church and I was going to Seymour to preach. Got to Driftwood and our car ran out of gas. I said, oh God, what are we going to do? Lord moved on me to lay hands on the dashboard. Me and Lisa laid hands on the dashboard and started to pray. People say, things don't get going to happen. God's not going to a miracle. Yes, He is. I started that car back up and I drove it to a gas station. And when I pulled in the gas station, Lisa, it died, didn't it? And I coached it to the pump. That's my God. Yes. Amen. People can't tell me my God is not real. My God is the Redeemer. You invest yourself in the kingdom of God and the power of God will invest itself in you. 
I've heard many testimonies. But I tell you what, I like to see the power of God move. Huh? I shared this with you a few weeks ago. I was sitting in the house with a gentleman. He said, I've never, I've never seen, seen God do a miracle. And this guy was a preacher. He said, I've never seen God do a miracle. We have, haven't we? Amen. I remember Granny Naylor. I'll just use this as story. Granny Naylor was laying over to Salem Hospital. They called the church here. Us men went over there and we laid hands. I laid my Bible right between her knees. She was laying there and she was gone. We began to pray. Amen. The power of God moved in that place. And she looked at us and she said, why did you guys do that? She said, I said, she'd seen angels, wasn't she? Man, she was in another world. And God brought her back. That's what that preacher was preaching about. He said, if God wanted to, He could raise Sarah right out of this girl this casket right now. Let me tell you what, I believe that. God raised me. God raised Lisa. I tell you what, God can raise anybody from the dead. The power of God is unrestrainable if we would use it in God's manner. People say, well, why do people die? It's a point that a man wants to die and after this judgment. We all want to die, church. But we ain't going to die unless God's will is accomplished in our life when God's people do God's will. Amanda, you're a great testimony. The devil tried to steal your life. I remember the doctors coming out to Sister Karen. There's really not a chance. There's really not a chance. Amen. There were so many of us in that home hall that night. We fell on our face before God. I remember Sister Karen looked at that doctor and she said, it should live. <laughs> Amen. She will live. She spoke by faith. She spoke by faith. Was there a battle after that? Yes. It was a long recovery. Praise God. Look what it's been up today. What Satan meant to steal, God gave back to us to look at that power. God using her talents. God using her prayer. God using her faith. Church, we need to understand Satan wants to kill you before you can do the will of the Father. Yeah. Do you really believe that, Brother Mike? Absolutely. If he can't kill you physically, he'll try to kill you spiritually. He wants you to be cold and indifferent with God. He wants your mind to begin to waver away from the principles of holiness. Mm. I'm going to talk the clothesline just for a minute. But people don't preach on this much anymore. But I will. I think people ought to dress like a Christian. Amen? You say, well, Mike, what are you talking about? Amen? I think our young girls ought to cover their cheeks. Amen? I'm being blunt. I think young men need to wear pants that are loose enough you don't see everything under them. And women too. I believe women need to cover up their nakedness. We live in a society today where sin is no longer called out. We call it the norm. I tell you what, church, the Bible even tells us to dress in holy and pure. Okay? Well, it says godly and pure. We need to dress us unto the Lord. You say, Brother well, Mike, you don't believe in shorts? I believe in shorts if they're not so short that they're short shorts. Okay? What about women wearing pants? I don't have a problem with women wearing pants. I have a problem with women showing their backside. Because what does that do? The Bible says that creates lust. Alright? I'm just going to talk about it as it is. Amen. Women say, well, they men just don't have to look at me. Well, you don't have to dress that way either. All right? To be provocative is a sad thing. We live in a society today that is very provocative. You can't hardly find a cartoon on the radio or uh, advertisement on the radio that's not provocative now. Church, we have to have a higher standard. We have to have a higher standard. But it says... To all and all nations shall call you blessed, and ye shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. Now, now I read it Malachi here. Let me go back here. I'm getting ready to go to Malachi. I wasn't quite here yet. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, 
that ye always have all sufficiency in all things may abound in every good work. God will give you exactly everything you have need of if you give God everything that you have to give you. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm going to go to Malachi. Everybody loves the book of Malachi. Not. Amen. This is one book a lot of people would like to take out of the Bible. Because of some, but people, I hope, well, this is one that get through it at me all the time. Brother Mike, that's in the Old Testament. That's in the Old Testament. We don't read that. Did Jesus make a statement such as this? I come not to do away with the law, but that for me the law might be fulfilled. Amen. Okay? Christ didn't do away with the good things. He fulfilled the finish of things. In Malachi, it says, we're going to start in verse 3. Chapter 3, verse 10, excuse me. Chapter 3, Malachi, verse 10. Bring all your tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour out you a blessing, and that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, and neither shall your vine cast off her fruit before the time in the fields, saith the Lord of hosts. And all nations shall call you blessed, for you shall be the delights of land, saith the Lord of hosts. Amen. I have read this scripture many, many times. And there's a lot that I think that we miss in these verses. I want to remind you there was one tribe that was set aside called the Levitical tribe. Those were the preachers of the day. They did not work other than do the work of God. That was what their labor consisted of. Their labor was for the kingdom. So they took care of the sacrifice, the burning the incense. They took care of the widows and orphans. They were the welfare and disability program in the nation of Israel. Okay, and, and the tribe, the Levitical tribe, had storehouses. They had buildings built, pits dug in the ground. They even found evidence of this around the Temple Mount, where they literally had big pits. They even found grains of wheat and barley and such as that in some of these pits that have been buried. For Several thousand years now. But as they would begin to bring in their blessings, number one, everybody brought a sacrifice to the Lord. The grain farmers would bring grain. The sheep farmers would bring sheep. The goat farmers would bring goats. The cow farmers, he would bring his calves. All of these things were brought in to be a sacrifice. The sacrifice was not a tithe. That was not a tithe. That was just simply a sacrifice. They would take and they would cut the animal's throat with a knife and bleed the animal out. They would catch some of his blood. And a portion of that blood went on the altar. And they would divide that meat. A certain portion of the family ate. The fat and the kidneys were put on the altar to burn. Okay? Because that was incense to God's nostrils. Anybody like to smell a good fatty steak fry? Yeah. Okay. You know what makes it smell pretty? The fat. The fat. 
Now that ain't good pork back then, but I like to smell bacon frying too. What makes it smell good is the, the fat. All right, so any animal when you're cooking it, your flavor, there's a little flavor in the meat, but most of the flavor is in the fat. But as the priest, as they slaughtered that animal, they would take out a portion, went to the widows and the orphans. And a portion went to the priest. Okay, and their families. By the way, this tribe was several thousand strong. So it took many, 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 many people providing offerings to bring the meat in. But also, when it comes time to time, I think I had a hundred ewes that dropped it. Uh, most ewes dropped two to three, so they would bring a tenth of all those ewes, baby sheep. They would bring a tenth of them to the priest. Now the priest had shepherds too. There were shepherd priests. And they would watch over the flock. And then some of them would bring their tithe of cattle, which a cow usually drops a calf. Let's say I had, you know, a couple hundred cows and say 180 of them dropped a calf. So a tithe of that would, you know, be two calves. You said, no, it wouldn't be 10. 18. Be 18. Well, my math's good. I went to school the same in the end. <laughs> but as we look at this, we think about how they brought these calves in. And now, people say, well, why did, they, why did the priests need that? They had to eat too. They had to eat too. Their job was to take care of the temple. And by the way, if any of you ever looked at the boundaries of the temple, that place was huge. Okay? If anybody ever thought about how there was men that done nothing but took food to the widows and orphans. Now, what is a widow? Everybody want to get that simplified too. A widow indeed is a woman that has no children or no family. Okay, That's what a widow indeed is. A widow that has children is their responsibility to take care of the needs of the mother or father or whomever it may be before the church does. But anyway, you went on to there. We think about giving. What is the necessity of giving? When we walk into church, we like the lights to be on, don't we? Somebody falls outside and breaks their arm, we'd be glad to have insurance. Because they pay the bill. Alright? When it's winter time, it's kind of nice to be warm in here, isn't it? All of those things take money. Those things take money. The kingdom of God is not free. Literature is not free. Bibles aren't free. We need to be doing the work of our Father. And you know, I know many of y'all tithe and do what you're supposed to do for God. That's wonderful. But people say, Brother Mike, don't, don't, don't convict me. Don't, don't bring this word. I'm just telling what God's word says. There was only one tribe amongst all of Israel that God told them not to tithe. And that was the tribe of Levites. They were not tithing. They was receiving and distributing. Okay, that was their job. They gave everything they had to the people. See, that's how preachers are supposed to be. We're supposed to give everything we have away. That's why I'd love to see a preacher living in a $10 million mansion. I don't like that. I don't think that represents the kingdom of God. Jesus said, I don't even have a pillow to lay my head on. Okay? They get up here and tell you to be Christ-like and tell you how much money to give, but yet, they live better than you do. That bothers me. Now, if anybody out there watches this, and you're, you're cleaning off the church and making a fortune, shame on you. Okay? We need to understand God has principles. God has a plan. And if God's people don't follow God's plan, God's will don't get accomplished. Yeah. People say, oh, I want the Spirit and the power of God to move. Alright? We have to be prayed up. We have to be read up. We have to be led up. God's Word has to be in our hearts. 
What does the word say about the mouth? It says, from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Father, here you come. Here again, I've got a bunch more scriptures, but I'm just too long-winded. I, 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 I could preach all day long. I love to preach, church. I feel better preaching than I do any time in my life. That's a fact. But I tell you what, guys, we've got so much to give to God. Don't think I'm just talking about money this morning. I want you to understand God wants you first. And when you give of yourself first, you'll begin to obey the Word and be a giver. You know, when they come to Jesus and they ask Jesus, people say this is not in the New Testament. It is. They said, they asked him about paying taxes. Should we pay taxes? Yeah. And what did the Lord say? He said, Give unto Caesars what's Caesars, and give unto the Lord what is of the Lord's. Okay, he was telling right there very plainly you give Caesar his taxes, and you give God his tribute. Would you all stand with us this morning? I noticed y'all was a lot louder on the first verses I read than the second part. I would love for somebody to shout one of these days when I mention giving time. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I just love that. The next time I preach on something like this, it may be a year or two years from now, but somebody's going to remember that and start shouting. Amen. But I tell you what, we need to understand God has principle. That's principle. And it's to meet every need that you have according to His riches in glory. Now this morning, I'm going to stress on, do you have a physical need, a spiritual need? Do you have a financial need? Bring it to God. Give it to Him. And He will bless you. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray right now, that each of us can understand. Lord, it's not about the amounts. It's about the heart. It's about the status of our worship. It's about our praise, our adoration. And Father, I pray right now that the power of the Holy Spirit will move on hearts. Lord, I don't want money from another church. I encourage people to support the church they attend. And Lord, that's what I want to do clearly. Lord, we're not out to steal other people's members. Lord, there's enough lost souls in our community that need to be saved. But Father, let us have the means to do the work that you've called us to. And Father God, I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.